So Mark Edward, uh, uh, mentalist uh, extraordinaire, mind, mind bender, and, <laughs> and he's going to show you some amazing magic and mentalism. Actually, I'm going to do one thing. Not yet. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Edward. I am I am a thought reader. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that's not possible. Uh, so today, instead of doing my normal shtick, uh, I wanted to try something a little different uh, because I know you're all skeptics. And as skeptics, we ask ourselves questions about how do psychics do these things? A lot of us work on that. Susan and I are constantly trying to uh, expose these people for what they are. Many of the people who you've seen here on the screen, this is from my private slide collection, there's Richard Wiseman. Uh, these are all people who influenced me over my lifetime in magic, and my magic career always led me in the direction of uh, psychic stuff, because to me it was more sophisticated, more people believed in it. You know, if you said you're going to, you could probably turn the slideshow off, maybe I could do that. Um, if you told people that you could uh, turn a handkerchief from yellow to green, they would appreciate it as a, uh, a, demonst a clever demonstration, but it's not likely that they would think it had anything to do with the powers of the mind. So when I stumbled on mentalism, I was really intrigued because it was around the time Murray Geller showed up, and it made quite an impression on all of us who were magicians. So but the, the real question I want to ask or put out there, <clears throat> you know, we know how a lot of psychic effects are done, but usually when we see a psychic, they will say something like, you know, a year from now, or three months from now, X, Y, or Z is going to happen. But who's really around to find out three or four, or a year or a year later? You usually forget what they said, and there's really no proof. So, to me, the real proof of a phenomenon is actually being able to make it occur in real time. Like that. See, I did that with my mind. <laughs> so things happen when you're in touch with the vibrations of the cosmos. And what we really want to do is engender that belief. So obviously I am here at a skeptics conference. I do a lot of them. I don't need to do a disclaimer for anybody, do I? Of course not, because the venue is everything. If this was the church down the street, it'd be a different set of explanations. So, I'm going to offer a prediction. Now, I, I've always loved predictions because they have a very rich history in the crossover world between magic and mentalism and psychics. Uh, predictions were generally made to get publicity. <clears throat> and they were very effective in the 30s and 40s. You'd go to a newspaper office and you would present something like I'm going to show you, and then you'd get publicity for your show wherever it was running. Uh, nowadays, unfortunately, making predictions about a future event can be incredibly dangerous. Okay? Uh, there used to be a, a mentalist named Burling Hall, and uh, he would just get out in front of an audience and he'd just make a lot of predictions about things. There's going to be a train wreck in Louisiana in the month of May. There's going to be uh, a fire in the, you know. You can't do that kind of stuff anymore. Because the CIA will come around and go, how did you know there was going to be that train wreck that you predicted? And if you know the story of Hamasen, who was Hitler's mentalist, it's exactly what happened to him. He predicted himself into a corner and they shot him. So, that the idea today is we have to be very careful with what we say if you're doing that sort of work. That's why the psychics today and mediums are so bad, because they're just dribbling out these generalities. Uh, Burling Hall was later referred to as Hurling Bull, because 
90% of the things that he would say never went anywhere. But the 10% people go, well, he did get that right. So anyway, my point is, I prepared something that's very harmless. It is not going to lead to any investigations by anybody. And I will tell you that I'm going to lie to you. That this is my job. Okay? I mean, somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> I know. I, but that's why I do this. So, the first thing I need is I need... So here's what I have. What I have is... This is something from the past. It's sealed in a box. Uh, I'm just going to say we had a white elephant sale um, on yeah, Christmas. Gift exchange. And a gift exchange. And one of them was left behind. Nobody chose it. But you see, I knew that. <laughs> so I brought it today. It was left over. And I'm going to just put it right here where everyone can see it. <clears throat> Some people can see it. So now I need a mind to work with. Otherwise, the end of this is totally meaningless. So I hope some of you still have that with you after the huge lunch you've had. This is the job I get, is trying to find an open mind, a mind that will share their thoughts with everyone in the audience. So do we have any volunteers, or do I just have to just pick somebody? which I'll be happy to do. I have no... <laughs> I'm still looking away from me. <laughs> the lady in the back. And your name is? I'm sorry, come on up. Carol. That's Carol. <laughs> Carol. Interesting. Yes. How are you? Fine, thank you. And your name is? Carol. Carol, that's correct. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Carol... Before we go any further, like this. Now I want you to tell everybody we did not plan anything. I didn't ask you anything before the show. There's nothing, nothing, no pre-show, which is by the way how television psychics work. They talk to the person like Carol before the show. They find out everything they need to need uh, need to know, and then when the cameras are rolling, they're suddenly able to say, "Oh, your name." Start with a C. And, you know, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to go straight to the gift here. So, just for fun, we didn't plan anything. No idea what's going to happen or who I am or what, what's going to happen. Very important. So, I'm going to just test your psychic powers for a second. Hold on to the box like this, and and just just for fun. This is purely for fun. Can you tell me what might be in there? What's your first impression? Don't think about it. First impression. Good thinking. A kitten. A rock. A rock. Wrong. This, <laughs> this shows you how tough my job really is. Right? <laughs> because I'm going to unseal the box and you can see what is inside. You want to try one more time? <laughs> it, it's, a little, it's a little box in purple paper with a, a gold ribbon on it. Very good. See? Once you can see the truth, everything is easy. All right. So, I won't, I won't tease you anymore. I'm going to open this up. This has been sealed for a oh, while. A couple of days. Right, soon. Well, before Christmas. Yeah. And inside... No, I'm sorry. This is a magic show. <laughs> uh, I have two packs of playing cards. Wow, what a gift, right? Two brand new packs of playing cards. But I will say, they have been open. And this is for a reason which will become apparent by the end of this experiment. So, Carol, if I was to ask you to take one pack, the red or the blue, which one would be your choice? You have to say it, don't think it, because I'm not working yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do I know which is red and which is blue? This has, this has red and this is blue. Yellow. So are you familiar with cars? <laughs> Just All right, I'm going to give you the red pack. you have a pocket? 
place that in your pocket. She has now separated one pack from the other. That leaves the blue pack for me. <laughs> what? Did I say something? It's terrible. I, don't, I could make some fun of that, but I won't. All right, so, so that leaves the blue pack for me. So these are the blue cards. And I want to show the audience, okay, so that you can see. These are, this is just a regular pack of 73 playing cards, like you can check them in any grocery store. 73? I was checking to see how skeptical you are. So yes, uh, you might want to put your glasses on because you are now going to be all the eyes in the audience. And as I go from side to side, I mean, you just tell everybody. They look pretty good? I saw a small contrast, but go ahead. A small contrast, well, that's okay. These are not brand new. Oh wait, what am I saying? They are brand new. Sometimes cards are just like that. But, I mean, the idea is you can tell one card from the other, right? This is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is why I put myself up in front of psych uh, psychic skeptics. <laughs> and I have to think ahead. So, I'm going to just ask you to help me out, okay? okay. Don't overthink it, alright? You can, you can think, you can <laughs> overthink it later. Do. I know, I know. But wait till the end and then... Okay, alright, I'll just pretend that I don't think I can. Pretend that, <laughs> pretend that you're just an average person who never thinks about why or how things happen. I can tell my cards apart. That's good, okay, alright, alright. So, now... <laughs> Next question is, are you right or left handed? I'm right handed. Okay, we're going to use your left hand. Because the left hand is traditionally known as the more psychic hand. It gets, it gets more blood from the heart, therefore it is more in tune. And I, I, I saw this on Dr. Phil, so I know it's true. Okay, so I want you to take your left hand, your index finger out in front of you, like this, very good. Because we're not going to do a pick a card trick, because I'm going to give her a chance to change her mind. That's only fair. I'm going to run through these, and I want you to just drop your index finger down on one card as they go by. Wait, wait, you, I didn't say take it, did I? That's the one you want, though. Well, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. This is the one you wanted, right? Yes, that's the one I want. Okay, she, she put her finger on the top, okay? What? Are you sure you want to? Are you messing with me? That's the one. All right. So, just so when you're driving home, you know, you might say, "Yeah, but everybody chooses the top card or something like that." Yeah. I'll give you a chance. Do you want to change it or is that it? I want to change it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Drop the finger out again. Finger out again. I'll run them by, and I want you to drop your finger on one as they go by. Oh, as they go by. Uh, yeah. That of course, as they go by, <laughs> how else would you do it? Are you happy with this card, or do you want to change your mind? It's okay, good. Right. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> positive? I'm totally positive. Okay, positive. she changed her mind. Oh. This is not an unusual event. We have a free mind, we are inquisitive, all of us here would do this. If you were up here, you'd probably do the same thing. I'm going to give her the card, I'm going to ask her to look at it, and now the important part, Carol, is can you remember? <laughs> yes, I can. In this circumstance, I think I'm going to cover my ass and... Carol, I want you to, I will turn away, show that card to everybody else. I will turn back when you are finished. Everybody got it? Yeah. All right, now put it back on the top here. The top? Yes. Okay. Because we don't need them anymore. Okay. Now comes the fun part. All right. <clears throat> On about December 15th, I had a vision. I literally woke up in bed and I saw this picture of a car. And I immediately went to where I keep my cars and I took one out and I put it in an envelope. And I mailed it to Susan. And Susan got the envelope like the 19th of December. 20th, yeah. So I made this prediction over two weeks ago. A little over two weeks ago. And you have the envelope, right? Now, a lot of people would think I'm in collusion 
There's a good word. Uh, I have some <laughs> colluded with Susan to make this event happen, but I want you to tell everyone, Susan, we uh, you haven't opened it, you haven't touched it. Well, I took it and I put it away. So but I didn't get near it. Oh no, no. And you thought I was going to open it, and you got all mad at me. You said, right, right, Don't right. you dare open it. All right. So let me now have the envelope. Actually, you hold on to it. I don't want to touch it for a few minutes here. All right. You've been holding on to that other pack of cards. The one. You <coughs> The, the red one. The red one. And I want you to hold the box like that. And what I'm going to do is take the cards. And I'm actually, this is fun. What I try to do is I sometimes say to people, I'm going to suggest that the card you're thinking of, you will no longer be able to see it. I know, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Here is the red pack. I'm going to go through the cards fairly rapidly. If you see your car, I want you to say stop, okay? So here we go. Did you see it yet? Good, it's working. See it yet? No. Good. Things are working as they should. What, did, would you almost see it? Well, it's just going to be amazing. I hope so. Otherwise, why would I be here? Okay. So, so again, did you see your car? <laughs> Her car is nowhere in here. Uh, now, if you would, Susan, would you hand the envelope to uh, Carol over here? By the way, remember, these are all red. If you would hand that to her. And show everybody that it's sealed. It even has a professional gold seal on it. It's very good on expense. And you can <laughs> oh, it's sealed real good, right? So remember, this is the sort of thing psychics used to do to get publicity. So what I'm trying to do is show you how easy it is if you know mentalism to make this happen. So there's another envelope in there, yes. Show everybody that one is sealed. And now if you would tear that open and read deep down inside, and there should be one card with a blue back. I'm sorry, with a red back. Oh, there it is. Better be in there. <laughs> there it is. Show everybody what it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Ta-da! Wow. <laughs> demonstration. I learned that from my good friend over in England, Doc Shields. And when he used to do it for newspapers in the UK, he would call it the transatlantic prediction. And he would have somebody in New York City open it on the radio or television, and he would be over in Ireland seeing what was going on. So I hope I gave you some things to think about. Uh, this Carol gave me some things to think about, which is Always fun. Now, I don't want to reveal a secret because, gee, that would be like taking food off another magician's table. You know what I'm saying? But I will offer any questions. Anybody has any questions? Otherwise, we'll just let sleeping dogs lie. Right? Everybody.